Hi, this is Kevin with Wordvice. Thanks for joining us in our video about the Graduate School Letter of Recommendation. In this video, we will answer some essential questions about these important documents here. First, what is a letter of recommendation? Why do you need it? Who should write your letters? What needs to be included in these letters? How should you ask someone to write a letter of recommendation? And when should you prepare these documents? So we'll go down the list and answer each of these questions. And if you need to find in the video an answer to your question, hopefully this makes it a little bit easier. So what is a letter of recommendation? Well, this is a detailed third-person discussion of your personal qualities, accomplishments, and experiences. Like the SOP, it's talking about what you've done in the past and showing your potential for this graduate program. So it is a critical part of any graduate or MBA application program. Generally, you need at least two letters of recommendation. So when we discuss the letter of recommendation, we're talking about the content of one specific letter. But you will need more than one referee, more than one letter, when you submit your application. This is going to be a summary of your positive skills and attributes from an outside perspective. So unlike the SOP, unlike your essays that you're writing, your personal essays, this is showing how someone else sees you as a candidate for graduate school. Why do you need the letter of recommendation? Well, it will provide information not found elsewhere in documents. It will also provide evidence of what you've written in your SOP and show your potential value for the program. So when we say provide evidence, we mean in your statement of purpose where you might have written about how arduously you worked on this task, this research internship, for example. In your letter of recommendation, your internship leader, if that is your referee, can discuss about what you did and how, how hard you worked. And this will validate what you've written about yourself by this external perspective. These also help define your status as a team player in the academic community. Ultimately, in graduate school, you need to work with a lot of other people who are doing research or are committed to a common goal. And by showing how you have a good attitude, um, you're open to criticism and change, these letters can show that you will fit into a particular graduate program. Who should be your referee? When I say referee, a referee means the person writing your letter. So who should write these letters? Well, the people you ask to write these letters should have some common characteristics. And not all of these, but most of them should apply to your referee. They should know you well, well enough to write about you with authority. So it should be not someone you've known only for a couple of months, but someone who you've known at least a semester or a year or more and you've worked with closely. They should usually not be colleagues or equals, but superiors. And instructors are the most common referee for the letters of recommendation. They should also be respected in their field. So when we say respected, a professor it usually qualifies for someone who has respect. If you can find someone at your university who is well regarded, who has published a lot of material, or who is respected by their peers, then that would be all the better. But it's not necessary for this recommendation. They merely should be a professor. They should also be able to write a good letter. This means that they should be willing to write a letter, or they have experience in writing letters of recommendation in the past. They should be able and willing to compare you favorably to your peers. What you don't want is a professor who barely knows you or sees you as mediocre. So in your letter, if someone says, he did the same thing as the rest of his peers, not much difference between him and his classmates, that's not going to reflect on your potential for a graduate program, which is demanding more of you than the undergraduate. They also should understand the graduate program that you wish to enter into. So they can factor in these goals and um, these potentialities into what you have done and experienced. So they can 
match your experiences and skills to the program that you want to do in the future. So when talking about the roles or title of the people who should be your referee, as we said, a professor or faculty member of a university, someone who knows your work is the best bet. But it can also be an employer, a research team manager, or internship supervisor. In many cases, in my case actually, there were a couple years that passed before I entered into my graduate program. So therefore, I had a letter of recommendation from an old professor, but also from a current employer. Since I'd taken some time off of school, it was necessary to find someone who knew my work in another area more recently, whom I could get a, a reference from. You can also ask a fellow researcher if you are already in graduate school. Now, although we talked about not asking a peer to give you a letter of recommendation, if they've achieved a certain degree of education and respect within their field, this can also work. And not every referee you choose will satisfy all the criteria that you want to show the selection committees. So therefore, you want a set of letters, as we said, two or three or more if they ex the graduate school accepts them. A set of letters that covers a range of skills. It can be academic, research experiences, and even applied experiences or jobs. So for instance, if you have one letter from a professor in a small group who can attest to the way you work well with your classmates, the way you are always on time, to your dedication to your essays and work in that class, that shows your in-class potential for grad school. If you have another letter from a research internship that shows your proficiency at running diagnostics tests or your ability to see things that other students do not or that shows you have a positive attitude, you're showing two different kinds of skill sets that gives the committees a view of the range of your potential and your abilities. You also need to provide these referees with important background information. Now, what kind of information do we mean? This can be transcripts, resumes, CVs, classes you've taken with them, research experience. You want to give them a file of all the things you've done because sometimes the only way that they know you is through their interaction with you in that class or that context. So give them all the information they need to combine this into an effective letter of recommendation. You should also provide detail about the application instructions and the programs you want to enter into. This includes the due date for application, copy of recommendation forms, instruction for submitting the letters of recommendation, and the programs you are applying to. Now, how should you ask someone to write the letter of recommendation? Can be the most tricky and awkward part of this process. You should always be considerate of their time and priorities. So instead of encountering them in the hallway after class when they're busy and asking them, please write my letter, instead schedule an office appointment to discuss plans for graduate school. You don't even have to mention what you're going to ask them. Just say you would like to discuss with them your plans for the future and they may have an idea of what you want to ask. So this gives them some time to think about it. It also gives them space and lets them block off their schedule so that you can make a formal request. Ask the referee if they know you well enough to write this for you. You don't want to assume that they know you or that they are willing to write the letter. So you should give them that choice. Also give them plenty of time to write the letter. Ask them at the beginning of the semester instead of the end of the semester, if they are professors. At the end of the semester, these instructors have so much work to do, they're probably writing letters for other students, and your deadline is approaching. So by giving them enough time to write it, you're giving yourself and your referee some breathing room and not pushing things to, until the last minute. Now there's a difference between asking a professor with whom you currently have a class to write a letter and asking a professor 
whom you haven't seen for a couple of years. And we'll talk about those approaches now. In my case, as I mentioned, it had been over two years since I was in university. So I had to contact a professor from years ago to ask them to write me a letter of recommendation. And how I did this was I sent a friendly email to them reminding them who I was and why I was contacting them. And I was concerned they wouldn't remember me. I was lucky that they did, but it's always best to play it safe. So you should summarize your university details, your past connection to them. How did they know you? Remind them of the class you took in 2007, by um, Organic Chemistry 302. Tell them your name. Maybe describe yourself so they can draw up a mental image of who you are. And provide that background information we talked about earlier in an, of, on a file that makes it easy for them to put all of these particulars together. And then if they wish, it's not a bad idea to offer to meet with them via phone or webcam just so they can re get a better mental image of who you are and speak to you. See where you are now. Maybe develop a rapport that you haven't had for years. You really want them to want to write this letter for you, not feel obligated. So when should you prepare these letters of recommendation? Well, we talked about when you should ask your referee to write it, but generally you want to give the referee at least a month to write it before the deadline. This is probably a conservative estimate. You want to give them at least two or three months if it's possible because you're going to be busy with all your other application materials. Please always check the university resources to find out guidelines about these submissions. Uh, one university might say that you need it to be sent within a month period after the application. Another might say you need to submit it at the same time as the application. So if they need to mail the hard copy directly to the university, you need to take into account the amount of time it takes to mail that letter and that could be up to a week or two. So please check these resources so you do not miss the deadlines. And always inform the referees about the details of these guidelines so they have as much knowledge at their disposal. You can also remind them, remind them of these deadlines. You don't push them, but let them know that these deadlines are approaching so that they have time to write their letter. So what to do when you have asked your referee to write the letter? you want to follow up with your letter of recommendation. That means checking back as the application deadline approaches. Contact the university about receiving your application materials. So ask them, have they received the letter? Have they received the materials? And of course, send a thank you note to the referee. The thank you note can also be a way of asking them about their progress on the letter or checking in to see if they've sent the letter. So again, you don't want to be pushy and say, I need this letter by this date, send it now. You want to remind, gently remind them that this is an approaching deadline for you. So by way of saying, thank you for writing this letter, I wanted to ensure that you have sent the letters. So please kindly respond. That is a good way to request this information. If you have any more questions about the letters of recommendation or any other college admissions documents, please visit our website at www.wordvice.com. Thanks and happy writing.